While FEMA fumbles the ball, Patriots are working together to save countless lives in North Carolina, Michael Snyder reports. What we're witnessing in the mountains of North Carolina says a lot about where we are as a nation. The federal response to Hurricane Helene has been absolutely abysmal, and hardly anyone is really surprised by this because the federal government can't seem to do anything right these days. But the good news is that help is getting to the people that need it. That help is being provided by teams of patriots that are working around the clock to get food, generators, and supplies where they need to be. In many cases, life-saving assistance is arriving just in time. I don't even want to think about what would have happened if everyone had just sat back and waited for the federal government to come riding to the rescue. According to the New York Post, a massive rescue and supply operation that has enlisted the help of hundreds of special operations personnel is being run out of a Harley-Davidson dealership. Hundreds of special operations personnel in North Carolina have formed their own homegrown rescue and supply operation in the aftermath of Hurricane Helene. After they grew tired of waiting for the federal government to get its act together, the Post found an all-volunteer operation being run out of Harley-Davidson dealership with ruthless efficiency and military precision. Who's FEMA? Ex-Green Beret Admimus, uh, Adam Smith uh, derisively responded when asked about agency's presence on the ground since the deadly storm ravaged the rural western part of the state. When is the last time that you saw the phrases ruthless efficiency and military precision used to describe an operation being run by the federal government? While FEMA fumbles the ball, these men are stepping up and getting the job done. It is being reported that they have put together a fleet of 35 helicopters. Isn't that amazing? This Harley-Davidson dealership has become a forward operating base, complete with a fleet of 35 helicopters that have flown hundreds of rescue, reconnaissance, and resupply sorties. That's like, that's like the equivalent of a, an aircraft carrier. Isn't that lovely? Organizers were calling the effort the Savage Freedoms Relief Operation, but Smith says they've proudly adopted an alternate, uh, alternate moniker, the Redneck Air Force. The dealership teams with current and former soldiers decked in, uh, out in camo pants and army boots with handguns strapped to their chests and hips, crop duster pilots, helicopter tour guides and special operations pilots, most of them off-duty or retired military, have answered the call from Smith and others in North Carolina's extensive military community. I was so encouraged to hear about what they are doing. Of course, they are not the only ones that have stepped up to the plate. Dr. Phil McGraw says that Samaritan's Purse is doing an absolutely amazing job of getting desperately needed aid to victims of the storm. Dr. Phil McGraw praised the work that Franklin Graham's relief organization Samaritan's Purse is doing to help the victims of Hurricane Helene in North Carolina. It is putting the Federal Emergency Management Agency's work to shame. Let me tell you, these Samaritan Purse guys don't have meetings to fill out forms to plan a meeting to get something going. They have verbs in their sentences. They have springs in their step and they're out making things happen, McGraw said. FEMA, all these other people are talking, thinking, no, not Samaritan's Purse, they're out doing things, he said. A video of Dr. Phil discussing what Samaritan's Purse has done, has been doing, has been getting a lot of attention. Over the years, Samaritan's Purse has helped millions of people all over the globe when disaster has struck, and once again, they're showing why they are so highly regarded. Why can't our federal government be more like Samaritan's Purse? According to one patriot that's involved in private relief efforts in a very remote part of North Carolina, the only government donation that has shown up in his area so far are pallets of electric chainsaws. We are on the mountaintop in Little Switzerland, collecting airlifted donations and distributing them to, at ho to homes that have no power or are inaccessible. The community is self-organizing incredibly well. This is the only federal government response I've seen so far. Almost all the pallets we have received are donations coming in from citizens and organizations. Feds usually don't come this far up into the mountains. This has been the government donation, pallets of electric chainsaws to communities that have no power. Electric chainsaws and no power. There are lots of homes and communities that still don't have power, cell service or water. There are teams going out to these communities 
and are still finding people who have not yet made contact since the storm. Our little project involves receiving airlifted donations and distributing them both to the ATV teams as well as directly to houses we can access via road. The electric chainsaws would help if there was actual power in the region, but for communities that have no power, electric chainsaws are essentially worthless, earth, worthless right now. FEMA gets a, a ton of funding, but I don't think what they're doing, I don't know what they're doing with it. According to New York Times, only 1,217 FEMA employees are available to respond to Hurricane Milton and other disasters as of Monday. The Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, is currently stretched thin on manpower even as an incoming Category 5 hurricane moves towards the U.S. Just 1,217 FEMA workers, which is less than 10% of their personnel, were available to respond to Hurricane Milton and other disasters as of Monday, according to the New York Times. It appears that Hurricane Milton could be one of the most destructive hurricanes in the entire history of our nation. Will the federal response to Hurricane Milton be as pathetic as the federal response to Hurricane Helene was? I've been watching so many videos that have absolutely horrified me. There have even been instances where the feds appear to be doing far more harm than good. In one case, a mysterious helicopter was actually caught on video destroying a volunteer donation site for hurricane victims. An unmarked military-style helicopter was caught on video destroying a volunteer donation site for hurricane victims in Burnsville, North Carolina on Sunday. The helicopter was seen swooping in low over the distribution staging area and performing, performing a rotor wash maneuver that used the powerful downward gust forces to blow away supplies and canopy tents. One of the individuals who recorded the incident claimed the area was established as a no-fly, no-drop zone and claimed the ghost helicopter pilots wore masks, suggesting they were special forces or government contractors. They could clearly see the supply set up, blue tents, etc., and see this was not a clear landing zone they captioned in the video. In the old days, our government could be counted on to exhibit at least a minimal level of competence. Sadly, those days are long gone. When everything hits the fan, don't count on the government to save you. During the very difficult times that are approaching, local communities will have to be united and we are all going to have to learn to work together because there is no other option. This is by Michael Snyder on End of the American Dream. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. About the author, Michael Snyder's new book entitled Why is available in paperback and for Kindle on Amazon. He's also written eight other books available on Amazon, including Chaos, End of the End Times, Seven Year Apocalypse, Lost Prophecy, Future America, The Beginning of the End, and Living a Life That Really Matters. When you purchase any of Michael's books, you help to support the work that he's doing. You can also get his articles by email as soon as he publishes them by subscribing to his Substack newsletter. Michael has published thousands of articles on the Economic Collapse blog. End of the American Dream and the Most Important News, and he always freely and happily allows others to republish those articles on their own websites. These are such troubled times and people need hope. John 3.16 tells us about the hope that God has given us through Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. If you have not already done so, we strongly urge you to invite Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior today. support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.